Short answer is, hell yeah. I watched the Doom movie that was released recently. Doom Annihilation. It was... How should I put it? It was shit. And as I watched this Doom Abomination, I decided to create this video. They even put John Carmack in there. Back to John Carmack. Geneticist. Did they actually think it would make any difference? It's like when you cover a shit in a chocolate icing. It's still shit but with chocolate. But this is not a movie review, it's sort of original Doom game review. Doom was made 25 years ago by id Software. I reckon everybody knows these blokes. John Carmack, who was the main programmer, John Romero, who was the programmer and level designer, and Bobby Prince, who composed the music. Even after 25 years, the game is still almost perfect. Yeah, graphics is a bit outdated. It looks like crap, to be exact, especially on larger screens, but it's been a blast to play. From time to time, I turn on some old machine, pick up Chainsaw and BFG and start the carnage in Doom 2. It's been a very long time since I've played first Doom, and now is the time to refresh my memory, and yours as well. Back in the day when the Doom was released, it was gory and brutal for its time. It became instantly popular. And when I say instantly, I really mean instantly. Within a couple of hours of initial release, people got addicted to the bloody game, playing at home, at work, at school, everywhere. Networks were crashing under heavy load due to the traffic caused by the employees and students playing deathmatch. Let's take a look at the setup first. To enter the setup, run setup exe from command line. First option is music card. It supports lots of them, so choose what you've got and move to the next option. Since the music was originally composed on Roland Sound Canvas SC55, I recommend playing Doom with some kind of Roland to get as original feel as you can. I've also recorded all tracks using Sound Canvas. It's in the description. Next option is Sound Card for sound effects. Again, choose what you've got. In control section you can choose just keyboard or keyboard and mouse or keyboard and joystick. If you want to use mouse it doesn't work as many people are used to for modern games. But I'll get to it later. Bind your keys on keyboard and mouse and that's about it for setting up the game. There are however three more options. You can run either single player or multiplayer, and these I'll cover later as well. You need at least 386 with 4 megram to run the game. If you wanna play the game and use maximum details, you need 486. In the single player you are presented with the main menu right away. Here you can set up some additional options before you start the game. If your computer is too slow you can either lower graphic details or set smaller screen size. But it looks horrible. Mouse speed and sound and music volume are here as well. When starting a new game you can select which episode you want to play. The story is simple, if you can call it a story that is. You are some unnamed marine guy, let's call him a doom guy, that is running about all over the moons of Mars and fighting off invading demons from hell. And that's the whole story. In the first episode you fight through demons and other creatures from hell on Phobos, one of the moons of Mars. <laughs> And after you're done with all the monsters here, you'll go to Deimos, second moon of Mars. Demons have been cultivating this moon for some time, as you can see from the half-human, half-demon architecture. And this is where you meet famous Cyber Demon. Third and the last episode takes you straight to hell. Let's start with the first episode. You can choose from 5 levels of difficulty. If you feel invincible, you can try Nightmare, where the dead demons respawn minutes or so after you kill them. Yeah. 
You start on the larger of Mars moons, Phobos. There's no intro. You're just thrown straight to the game with a handgun. If you chose ultra violence or nightmare difficulty, you'll get shotgun right after you kill your first zombie man. Zombie man is the blob of pixels in the distance. After you get through the first level, which is quite easy, you get to see the map of the moon installation, where you are and where you're going. Each episode's got 9 levels of non-stop massacre, getting harder and harder with each level. Second episode takes you to the smaller moon of Mars, Deimos. This moon is carved by the demon's work. You can find all sorts of demon art decorating the place. After you clear eight levels, you have to defeat monstrous cyber demon at the end of this episode. It's actually not that hard as it looks at the first sight. There's enough ammunition for rocket launcher to destroy the entire moon. After you kill the bastard, you're sent straight to hell. There are same kind of monsters in hell as I met before, it's just more of them. Demons can be a bit racist. It seems like they don't like each other. And sometimes they start fighting among themselves, which kind of helps. There are eight types of weapons you can find and use to obliterate your enemies. You start the game with a handgun and your fist. If you die and need to restart the level, you start with the handgun too. You can quite easily find yourself in a situation when you're out of ammo. In this case, you can either use your fist or, if you found one, chainsaw. Chainsaw is especially effective against pinkies. Next one is my favorite, shotgun. It's not effective at longer distance, but it kicks ass in close encounters. And of course, minigun is a must-have to kill bloody demons. Later in game you get to use rocket launcher. It's a bit dangerous, it can kill you if you're too close to the explosion. And of course there are some high-tech weapons available too. First is plasma rifle. And the second is BFG 9000. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what BFG stands for. Big fucking gun. Does the name suit the gun? Just take a look. For lazy people or someone who finds the game too hard, there are also cheat codes. Invincibility, all weapons, walking through walls, etc. All available cheat codes are in the description. Controls, however, are not the same you might be used to from modern games. If you're using only keyboard, it's pretty much clear and straightforward. But if you want to use mouse with keyboard, it might not be what you're used to from today's games. The character is locked in Y-axis, so you can't look up and down. There's only forwards, backwards, left and right. Moving mouse left and right turns the character left and right as you're used to. But since there's no up and down, moving mouse forward and backwards moves the character also forward and backwards. So how do you kill a demon who's not in your line of fire, you ask? Just point in the same direction, fire and doom guy shoots up or down by himself. Even though it doesn't look very good by today's standards, Graphics was the state of the art in 1993. Its software named the engine It Tech One, also known as Doom Engine. The engine was also used for titles like Heretic, Hexen and Strive. Space itself is 3D. Monsters, items and weapons are 2D sprites though. Doom was ported for almost any hardware, including PlayStation, Game Boy, iOS and even a calculator. Music and sound effects were created by Bobby Prince. He was told by John Romero to make music in metal style, 
but he thought that ambient music would better suit the game and produced tracks in both styles. The monster sounds are actual animal noises. If you're not happy with music and sounds Bobby Prince produced, you can use editor and replace all sounds, music, graphics, practically everything. Since John Carmack released source codes for Doom Engine, anyone can create his own Doom game. Maybe the most famous of all Doom ports is Zed Doom. You can play it in high resolution with mouse look, jump in and most importantly in 64-bit systems. For those who don't like original 2D sprites, there are actually 3D models of monsters, weapons and items. And that's it for this review. Doom really is a cracking game. Every time I hear the term first person shooter, Doom is the first game that comes into my mind. Doom inspired many games in the past and I reckon it will in the future. And now to the score, I'm gonna give it 90%. Catch you in the next video. Cheers.